Hey there, I have two interesting topics for you today because this has been an amazing week for paleontology. Enjoy! Paleontologist Greg Funston and his team of researchers at the University of Edinburgh released a new study in the Canadian Journal of Earth Sciences on the world's first confirmed Tyrannosaur embryos, giving us a size estimate of the hatchlings as well as the size of the eggs. Let me tell you, they're big. Funston and his team studied a preserved Albertosaurus embryo claw and Despletosaurus embryo jawbone and estimated these little squirts to be as large as a medium-sized dog at around 3 feet long, like a border collie or something. They also estimate the eggs to be about 17 inches long. Keep in mind that Despletosaurus and Albertosaurus weren't even the biggest tyrannosaurs, capping off at around 30 feet long or just over 9 meters for my non-American homies. I know exactly what you're thinking, T-Rex babies were even bigger. I would generally agree with you. And before you get ahead of yourself, a baby T-Rex would make a terrible pet. I know they're cute, but they grow very, very quickly. Look, there may be an alligator sewer problem or the decimation of ecosystems in the Everglades by ball pythons, but those problems hypothetically pale in comparison to juvenile T-Rexes the size of Priuses running around eating people's dogs and toddlers. A normal person simply couldn't sustain the appetite of one of these animals and would probably be terrified when they discover their cute little fuzzy T-Rex has doubled in size in a week. Scientists say they were fast too, especially when young. Young tyrannosaurs were pursuit predators, running down fast prey. They were thin and lanky, built for speed. You probably couldn't outrun one. Big, lumbering tyrannosaur adults probably relied on ambushes to attack much larger, slower, and more filling prey like Edmontosaurus or your mom. Anyways, back on topic. Funston says this baby tyrannosaur find is especially amazing because of the rarity of baby dinosaur fossils in general, which he attributes to the theory that dinosaurs didn't generally lay their eggs in places where they could be buried. So thank God for our sake that these particular tyrannosaurs were such terrible parents. The sacrifice of your children pleases the smart future monkeys. Funston also theorizes that the reason we don't ever find tyrannosaur nests is because the eggs may have been soft-shelled and thus prone to decomposition, particularly after they hatched. In summary, tyrannosaur babies were big, their eggs were around 17 inches long, and they may have been soft-shelled. I would like everyone to know that Spinosaurus is still having an identity crisis and is letting everyone be aware of it. In a study in the journal Paleontologia Electronica, I hope I said that right, David Hone and Thomas Holtz assert that there is evidence that contradicts the notion that Spinosaurus actively hunted its prey by swimming, and that there is no evidence contradicting the theory that the animal was a wader. In fact, there's plenty of evidence supporting it. The authors of the study essentially say that recent, well-preserved, and near-complete specimens provided drastic new insights into the lifestyle of the animal, showing the new extent of its semi-aquatic life, but that this extent was highly dramatized by everyone. Get ready for a bunch of quick science talk. These authors essentially obliterated the notion that Spinosaurus was an underwater pursuit predator, suggesting a waiting lifestyle. They had a whole paper on this, but I included the most understandable and strongest points. To begin, their nostrils were posteriorly retracted, but not dorsally retracted. In other words, nostrils were far back to help them breathe while their snout was underwater, but not on top of their head to help them take a breath after being submerged. High tooth regrowth rate suggests they ate hard, slow-moving animals like crustaceans, and microwear analysis and tooth shape places them into the category of grasp smash, grasp crunch predators, which hunt these armored slow animals. Their putative sensory system on their snouts was not unique to semi-aquatic animals, since it has also been found on animals like Neovenator and Despletosaurus that have no aquatic connection. Neuroanatomy of the skull of Irritator, or large spinosaur, showed that the animal had a head-down posture showing ease of vertical movement, which would be important for a waiting lifestyle, but not a pursuit predator one. Since they're closely related, the authors are inferring that Spinosaurus is the same way. Spinosaurus had a long neck built for lunging movements, not a short one for quick underwater movement. Analysis of neural connectors in the tail show a lack of tail muscle used for swimming found in crocodilians and monitors. Quote, The hind limbs of Spinosaurus do potentially provide evidence for aquatic locomotion and even striking at prey underwater, but specifically not in the sense of pursuit predator. Their diets were fish as well as pterosaurs and terrestrial dinosaurs. The authors reference a 1988 study that says that no semi-aquatic animal can survive solely on fish. In other words, you spend your whole life in the water hunting fish, or you do what the Spinosaurus did and wade and hunt. Whew. In summary, our spiny boy was probably not an underwater pursuit predator, but was likely a wader standing on the shores of rivers and picking out fish and crustaceans that swam or walked by their snouts. Could it swim? Yeah, probably. It could probably swim pretty well, but it likely didn't get its food that way. They also could have foraged for food on land, either by digging up lungfish with their claws or finding meat to eat in the forests and swamps. I think it's really fun to learn about this crazy dude. I've said it before in my past videos, this is not my first video on the Spinosaurus, and it definitely won't be my last. This video was crammed with information. 
What can I say? It was a dope week for dinosaur news. They also found a new titanosaur in Argentina that might be the biggest dinosaur ever found, but there's not enough information about it yet. What can we learn from all this? Science is moving at the speed of light, and we live in an amazing time where we can learn more about dinosaurs every day. I hope you guys learned something new. As always, thank you for watching, remember to keep an open mind, and I'll see you next time.